hold this still. I don't usually see frost on my windows. That's kind of cool. I mean, I grew up seeing that kind of stuff, but not here. That is that is really rare. Even on really cold days, I guess I've got a little bit of humidity in the air or something. Okay, I just wanted to get a shot of that. It's about 31 degrees inside, so it's got to be pretty cold outside. And it's the 6th of uh, December, 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, 31 in here. Cool. Just getting up, happened to look over, like, oh, that'll probably melt pretty soon. It's supposed to get, it's supposed to be about 10 degrees warmer today than yesterday, so like maybe low 60s outside today. That'll be cool. But for now, let's get this guy going. Just before I canceled the water account, I hauled out, well, I had the new tank. It's a 1,500-gallon tank. I filled it up to 1,000 gallons. That was four or five trips, uh, 200 gallons in the tank, so it would have been five trips. So I went to town five times, five days in a row or something like that, and hauled out 200 gallons. So I had 1,000 gallons. Decided not to fill it up because I figured we'd get rain and we did we get we got some rain in the monsoon season so every time it rained I'd put it back in the tank but back then I was still doing laundry from the main tank thinking I had more water coming so I didn't start recycling until much later anyway so I just measured it um, a couple days ago I've still got over 250 gallons left okay um, so what have I been doing lately anyway um, Finally, I just got frustrated. I'm like, well, how about if I just give it away for free? I'll put it up on the website. So episode zero is on marsclipper.com. And we'll just do the little blip up here. And that's for free for now. And I think what's there, I'll leave for free. So the object of the game is, is to have the lowest score. And he's like, yes, the lowest score wins. And she's like, well, why do you play at all? Why not just not play? And then you have the lowest score. And then there's like three frames later, we sitting there, he's thinking about it and she's walked off already. And he's like, wait a minute, that's not right. <laughs> and I felt the same way about the book. It's like, well, I could just, you know, if you cut it down to the point where it's a book size instead of an encyclopedia, well, then you cut everything out that, that was fun. All right, automatic, you know, the robot does it. That's the cool part. When I was looking on Amazon's website, there was a little tick box for series. And at first I'm like, okay, that's interesting because I was going to do season one, season two, season three. All right, so I was thinking about that. It's kind of like the videos on YouTube. I'll put up a video that I don't think anybody's going to watch and it ends up being one of the top 10 videos. Yeah, you're like, okay. Just put it out there and see what happens. You never know. I'm trying to see. Yeah, I've talked too long again. Ah, some of the same characters will add in new characters. The spaceship will get an upgrade. More robots. New mission. Okay. Okay. So why do I want this to be done so soon? Right. Well, so soon, 10 years later. This will probably be the last video for 2020. Uh, I just really wanted to say thanks to everybody that's followed along. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to get this video chopped up into littler pieces because, again, it's too big. <laughs> Must stop talking. Check. All right, it looks like it's going to work. <sighs> oh, it is just gorgeous out here. That's too far away. Let's try it again. Oh, that's a good look. There we go. All right. Oh, this doesn't show. Postal. <laughs> Oops. Get the mic to stay still. That should work. Yeah. <sighs> I swear, I just sit down. Rabbit right behind the camera again. This is just like the last one. He's going over for some water, which is probably frozen solid still. I saw some ice. Uh, there's another puddle over there. We actually got, this was kind of fun. 
Oh, this is like the 12th, I think, today. Uh, this is, I think, Saturday morning. I'll flash it up something. Anyway, um, I had been mentioning a while ago, it's like, yeah, it's been a drought. We haven't got any rain. And you know, it's like, I'm getting kind of nervous. Am I going to run out of water? You know, it's always been kind of a race. Would I run out of cash first or water or food or sanity or, you know, whatever, right? And then you guys keep sending food, so thank you. Or somebody will send me money, thank you. Or I got, I got to figure out some way to get people to send me water. That would be really heavy, though. I don't want to do that. But yesterday, or no, day before, yeah, two days ago now, uh, happened to see on the weather, sometimes I'll look, and 10% chance of rain. I'm like, <laughs> what are the odds of that doing anything? You know? It's it's been nothing for quite a while. I mean, obviously it's the desert, but the first year I was out here, there was flooding, you know. So I just think, oh, maybe it'll happen, you know. Anyway, I get, I mean, just, it wasn't very much, but I've got trash cans on all of the downspouts. So I look at, you know, the first time it rained a little bit, and you look out, the sidewalk is wet, and you're like, oh, maybe it'll happen, but, you know. You don't really expect that. You try not to get disappointed. And then a couple hours later, it's sprinkled again. And typically what happens, it'll rain just enough to get the solar panels damp. And then the wind will blow and the ground is still dusty. It's not wet yet. And all the dust will stick to the solar panels. And so you get just enough rain to screw up the panels and it'll be cloudy all day. And you won't get any solar, so then you can't use the computer and you're sitting there at 7 o'clock at night with nothing to do and you end up going to bed because you're bored and it's dark and you don't have any power. You know, I don't have a lot of things I can do and it's, uh, well, it, I'm so used to using the computers and stuff that when I run out of power, then I'm like, well, now what do you, what, what do, you do, you know? Anyway, so a couple days ago, it rained a little bit and then it stopped and it rained a little bit and then it stopped. Well, I ended up with maybe three or four inches in the bottom of each of the cans. Okay, that's not very much. But I walked around with the shop vac. When it's that low, that's about the best way to do it. Just suck it all out real quick and uh, dump it in a bucket and carry it to the next one and so on. I ended up with probably 15 gallons. Okay, that's the most rain I've gotten in months. Now, that's not very much. And it was really dirty because the roof was dirty, right? So I really couldn't use that for my main water. So I just go ahead and dump it in the washing machine and that started with uh, for the next load. And I'd been busy on the book lately, so I hadn't been doing laundry and I realized I had about three loads to do. So I've been recycling water for laundry for months now. I kind of lost track of when, but there is a video about that. And what I've been doing is when you do the first load, you put in water. So I'm putting in the recycled water, and I'll explain that a little bit. But So you put in water, you do the wash, it pumps that water out, that's the dirty water, and then you put more water in, that's to rinse the soap out of the clothes. What comes out the second time, the rinse water, is basically clean water with a little bit of soap in it. So I put that in a separate trash can. That water I put back into the, the second load to do the wash because it's basically cleaner water and it's got a little bit of soap in it already. Great, right? So by doing that, I can really reduce how much water I actually use for laundry. Now, the water, when it comes out of the washing machine, when it's dirty, I have that go down through a couple trash cans that are full of sand and I'm sand filtering the laundry water a little bit of chlorine, and then I pump it back into a separate tank. Next week, I use that water for the whole wash cycle. Okay. I expected maybe I could get a month out of that, and then it would be so bad I'd have to dump it out. Um, what's actually happening, though, is the little bit of chlorine, I'm, I'm just using a swimming pool puck. That little bit of chlorine keeps the water from getting too skanky. It uh, doesn't get um, algae growing or anything in it. It doesn't smell super clean, but 
The clothes, when I get, when I wash them, I hang them up on the line. A little bit of chlorine smell in the clothes when they're wet, that evaporates. Basically, they don't smell bad. Um, I mean, obviously, clean water would be better, but it's been fairly successful, I guess, is the way to think about it. Anyway, of several months, I've been using that same water over and over again. So this last, yesterday when I did laundry, I got to dump in about 15 gallons of rainwater, which was clean. I mean, not drinkable. It was dirty looking, but it at least wasn't recycled laundry water. So you do your socks and your underwear with that load. So that load was the cleanest. And then you kind of reuse the water for your jeans and stuff after. Run it through the sand trap. And uh, we're back in business again. So I've got probably, I'm going to say 100 gallons in that tank that I just keep reusing over and over again. And, you know, next monsoon when I get a bunch of clean water, I'll probably dump that out and start fresh. But it's just kind of like, well, you just keep reusing it. And that that means that the water I have left is drinkable and also showers. And that's the other thing I've been doing. Uh, I don't know if this was on the other video, but I catch the water from the shower and I dump that into the laundry system. And it goes through the sand. And so all the soap and stuff gets stuck in the sand. And eventually the sand is going to get contaminated to the point it doesn't work anymore. But it hasn't been a problem yet. So we'll just keep doing it that way. And I mean, I've got plenty of sand, obviously, out here. So it's just a matter of when it gets to the point I don't feel like it's working as well. I'll just go in there, dig out all the sand, put in fresh sand and gravel. And then we're, we're good to go again. Swimming pools, a lot of swimming pools are using sand to filter. So it's, it's a fairly well-known idea. Uh, it's one of those things that I should have tried years ago, but... Well, I did, kind of. Uh, back first year I was out here, I think. Every time I tried testing running water through sand, because the sand wasn't washed... I was getting a lot of sediment from the sand into the output. And I'm like, well, that's no good. But I was also doing it at very small scale. When I started doing trash can scale, then I started seeing it was actually working better. Plus, any sediment that I put into the water just settles to the bottom. So it actually worked out pretty good. So the other thing that I've started doing, I made a smaller rig with just a, uh, with a five gallon bucket. And same thing, more sand. And that was a broken bucket already. So it had a crack and stuff in the bottom. So I just put some more holes in it. And I take the sink water uh, from washing dishes. I use really watered down dish soap. So it doesn't sud suds up very much. It's just enough to work, but it's not a lot of foam kind of thing. So that water, I run it through a five gallon bucket of sand and then I use that water to give to the bees and the rabbit dishes. It's pretty clean water by that point. It's It doesn't smell like soap. You don't really feel the soap. I mean, I wouldn't want to drink it, but considering there is no other water for them to drink, I always see them coming back. So if it was bad enough, they would just not come back. So I put some in with the bees and some in with the for the rabbits and the birds. And uh, that, that way I'm not wasting drinkable water keeping the wildlife alive but they're still getting something so i, I kind of keep an eye on it if they didn't come back then i'd you know put some fresh water out for them again because it's just kind of fun looking out and seeing a rabbit walk by okay so that's that oh the when i sold the truck i canceled my water account that was april and this is december when i just before I canceled the water account, I hauled out, well, I had the new tank. It's a 1,500-gallon tank. I filled it up to 1,000 gallons. That was four or five trips, uh, 200 gallons in the tank, so it would have been five trips. So I went to town five times, five days in a row or something like that, and hauled out 200 gallons. So I had 1,000 gallons. Decided not to fill it up because I figured we'd get rain and we did we get we got some rain in the monsoon season so every time it rained I'd put it back in the tank but back then I was 
still doing laundry from the main tank, thinking I had more water coming. So I didn't start recycling until much later. Anyway, so I just measured it um, a couple days ago. I've still got over 250 gallons left. Okay. So 250 in a 1,500 gallon tank isn't very much, but the IBC is only 275. Um, so you can, you can last quite a while on that if you don't do laundry with it. That's the issue. So if you don't waste it on laundry, take short showers, uh, and then I'm reusing the shower water to do more laundry. Okay, so I'm, I'm not putting very much fresh water into laundry anymore. I do put a little bit in sometimes just to bring it up if I need to, but mostly I'm just recycling. So the last time I measured it was about five, six weeks ago. And I, I figured out I only used less than 100 gallons in a month. Okay, so I got about three months worth of water left at this rate. Last year, we got some rain over winter. So we'll see. You know, I'm not desperate yet. I've got several months left. And if I cut down a little bit, you know, it'll be okay. So that part is going out well. Just because people have been asking about that. Oh, you're running out of food. You're running out of water. No, not so much. Got lots of sunshine too, so we're fine there. Um, so what have I been doing lately anyway? Um, so I talked a while ago about Mars Clipper. Uh, I bring that up every now and then. So the reason I stopped messing around with the bicycle project with, tur with Turtle was I didn't want to spread myself so thin. So I'm th I thought, well, let me get one thing done and then I'll wait on Turtle, come back to it. Okay. So... I had been, you know, the Mars Clipper Project, that was a book from 10 years ago that I started, more or less. Um, would go for a year or two and then find it again and write another chapter and get all excited and then forget about it for a year kind of thing. So this year was the year to get it finished. So when I was writing it, I was having fun. I just get on a roll and whatever the voices told me to write is what I would write. And it was, it was working out really good. And, uh, you'd have a funny, you know, a good day where you'd have lots of jokes and so you'd write them in there. And some of the days weren't so funny. So you'd write something serious and, you know, you just kind of go with it. And the trick with writing, I think, is don't edit, just write. Editing can come later, you know, so I turn off spell check and I just write. You know, I don't, I don't want to have any more critics. I got enough critics in my head already, so I just dump it out there. Well, I was writing it in a text editor that doesn't do page breaks and everything. And I just would say, okay, well, this, this file is, you know, I'd get to the end of what I thought was a logical ending point, and I'd, then I'd start a new chapter and make a new file and kind of lost track of it. Well, towards the end, I thought, well, I should do an introduction because the original story started we're already in orbit this is a spaceship movie and so we're already in orbit and we had nothing at all about how we got there in the first place so i took some time a while back and wrote what i called episode zero as the introduction that was just going to be a quick well how did you get here right well episode zero ended up being 400 pages long or something ridiculous like that that was supposed to be the first chapter, right? Uh, I'm like, oops, that's not going to work. So I, I, I keep looking at it, and I'm like, oh, i got to edit this down, shorten it up, do something with it, right? Finally, I just got frustrated. I'm like, well, how about if I just give it away for free? I'll put it up on the website. So episode zero is on marsclipper.com, and we'll just do the little blip up here. And that's for free for now. And I think what's there I'll leave for free. But then I got to thinking about it again. Um, what happened was episode zero was long. And then I finally got to the point I was done my second pass on editing for what I'm calling season one. Because in my head, this already has about four or five seasons ahead of it. And I had kind of started writing this as if it was going to be like a series of like a TV show or something like that. I don't know. I had grand ambitions for it when I started it. So... It always felt like it was more than just a book. Okay. So 
chapters I called episodes, and then the first book is season one. Okay, and then episode zero was supposed to be the the uh, the introduction. That turned into more of a prequel. Okay, and I finally get all of ep- or all of season one, the first book, put together into one file, and put it into a page format. And it's like 1,800 pages long. Oh, no. What am I going to do with that, right? And, you know, you write something for 10 years, you get kind of attached to it. So it was really awkward trying to cut some of it out. And I'm like, well, that's that's not how I want it to be, you know. You guys know I talk too long anyway, so this is kind of the same thing. There was BC Comics. I always forget the character names, but I think it was BC and then the one that they always called the hot chick, right? I think it was her. So they're out golfing. He's he's showing her how to golf and they're, he's explaining golf. And so she asks the question. So the object of the game is, is to have the lowest score. And he's like, yes, the lowest score wins. And she's like, well, why do you play at all? Why not just not play? And then you have the lowest score. And then there's like three frames later, we sit in there, he's thinking about it and she's walked off already. And he's like, wait a minute, that's not right. <laughs> and I felt the same way about the book. It's like, well, I could just, you know, if you cut it down to the point where it's a book size instead of an encyclopedia, well, then you cut everything out that, that was fun. All right. Well, anyways, I'm looking on the Amazon website a little bit. The books that I've published are print on demand. And what that is, is you upload the file to Amazon. Amazon's computer just sits there. And whenever somebody clicks on like Desert Storm Diaries, the robot spits out a book. It just makes it on demand. There's there's not a warehouse full of Desert Storm Diaries. It prints every book when you click on print or buy, basically, which is pretty slick, all right? So instead of me needing to pre-order 10,000 copies of a book and then I have them sitting in a warehouse somewhere and then I got to deal with that, it just sits there and it doesn't cost me. I can I can create a book for $0. I just go through the process, boop, 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 poof, here's a book. I can click on a button. They send me a copy. I have to pay for that. That's the first time I pay is when I, when I get my author's um, proof, proof book. You know, so they'll send me a copy. It'll cost me a few dollars. I'll look at it. I'm like, okay, this is good. Or, oh, I made a mistake. Let me go back and redo something. Um, like Desert Storm Diaries, when we created that, uh, I got the paging wrong. So page one is on the wrong side. And so the, the next 301 pages are all flipped wrong way you can still read it it just you you, when you look at it you're like oh that's not right it's hard to see that on the computer until you get it and never did go back and fix that i should have but anyway um anyway yeah so i can i can create the book it doesn't cost me anything to create it when somebody buys the book amazon just takes their cut and i get the leftover Okay, so I make about 2 or $3 every time somebody buys the book. Amazon keeps some, I keep some. Then they take care of, they print it, they mail it. I don't have to touch it. That's the best part, really, is people are buying Desert Storm Diaries that was published in 2009, and I haven't touched it since. You know, I've got a couple here just because it's nice to see your own book once in a while. You're like, oh, yeah, that's real. You know, people can read that. But it's like, it's just, it's hands off. It's automatic. You know, so if, if something ever happened and for some reason people all went out and bought that at the same time, I wouldn't be freaking out like, oh, my God, I have to go to the post office and mail these. No, it's just automatic. You know, the robot does it. That's the cool part. So back to the Mars, the Mars world, the Mars Clipper book project 
episode zero, I'm going to leave for free on the website. So you can read that. It's, I don't know, it's a few hundred pages long. It's like 20 chapters is what I broke it down to. Um, I know my mom has read the whole thing. Thanks, mom. Um, she's sending me back all the revisions. So and when I have time, I go through and try to fix some of the mistakes. Um, I didn't do spell check. I just put it up there. So that's up there for free. But what I'm, what I'm realizing is what I really wanted was to stop everything I was doing out here, focus for a month, get the book done, get it up online, then I could be hands off and I could go back and work on the bicycle again or something else or, you know, finish putting insulation in the house just in case it gets cold, that kind of thing, right? So I, I kind of stopped everything else and just nose to the grindstone, fix, finish the book, okay? Then... I realized I had just written an 1800 page long book. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly the sound it made. And I'm like, well, now I just spent the last two months finishing this book and I can't publish it. And I'm like, ain't nobody going to pick up an 1800 page book. You know, it's, it's an, you know, people get scared when they see that. Um, the winds and the winds of war and war and remembrance were both about a thousand pages long. I read both of them. I loved them. I, I would read it, but I don't think anybody else would. So when I was looking on Amazon's website, there was a little tick box for series. And at first I'm like, okay, that's interesting because I was going to do season one, season two, season three. All right. So I was thinking about that. Well, some of the books that I used to read when I was stuck in the barracks way back when I was in the Navy, you'd find a book that somebody had written a bunch of um, the, the survivalist is one, uh, Jerry Ahern. That was way back in the eighties. I think, I think he's still writing them. I should go back and look. It'd be a little 150 page book, quick read, um, same characters, new adventure kind of thing. And there was a few books I used to read that were similar to that where the guy would just crank them out, you know, so you, you're nothing else to do after work. So you'd sit down and read a book and drink a beer. Right. So I got to thinking about it. I'm like, well, I sure can't. I, one, I don't want to edit all of this into this. It, it'll just ruin the flow for me. It, if, to me, I did it for fun. Obviously, if it makes money, that's great. But it was, it was to be for fun. If I do three years of editing on top of this, it's not going to be fun anymore. And it won't make any money because I'm spending the next year or two editing. All right. So I thought, well, okay, we'll put a few out there and see if anybody likes them. It doesn't cost me anything, right? Um, if nobody buys it, well, whatever. I've still had people buy the books that I didn't expect anybody to buy. It's kind of like the videos on YouTube. I'll put up a video that I don't think anybody's going to watch. And it ends up being one of the top 10 videos. Yeah, you're like, okay, just put it out there and see what happens. You never know. So what is episode zero now is going to turn into probably three books that are between 100 and 150 pages long each. Okay. And they'll just be a quick series book. Um, so it's kind of like... Uh, like, I'm just going to say Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys or whatever they were, you know, that kind of a little quick read book kind of thing. Um, most of the pages are not like really long paragraphs. That's, that, that helps a lot of people, I think. You know, it's like a lot of the book, the whole series is, is dialogue. You know, if I'm talking to the robot, you know, I'll say a line, the robot says a line. You know, so that it spaces things out so you can read it really fast. So a hundred pages isn't like, you know, you're not reading medical text or something like that. It's, it reads pretty fast. So, so the plan was, I'm trying to see, yeah, I've talked too long again. Ah, so the plan was get the book done by the end of this year. This is December, 2020 still. Well, I just realized looking at it, I'm like, well, I can't release this 
and you know it's, that's just mean you know as a book but what i can do i can pretty quickly get episode zero the prequel out as three books to make my deadline of getting the first book done by the end of the year okay then i can take all of this and i can break it into more logical sections so that'll come out as I get them finished, okay. So I kick out a book once a month or something like that. And in my head, when I finally got that figured out, it's like, okay, now I've got progress. Instead of trying to create this big monster, I can create little chunks, get them done, spend a little more time, do it right, okay. Go back, fix all the spelling mistakes, maybe make it a little bit easier to read, you know, fix some of the plot holes and then get it out there, all right. And one more. Check. Hey, still working. All right. Okay. So the goal was to get the book done and then get on to the next project. And I was getting to the point, I was really getting antsy. I almost just dropped the book, honestly. I'm like, just, ah, uh, you know, it's too much. I don't want to deal with it right now because I'm really excited about. The next project, and this is like, this was like one of those times where I had to sit myself down in the corner and just talk to myself, which was funny. So bring out the camera and then talk to myself for an hour and a half and then sit and watch it a couple times and really get my head straight. So I'm like, okay, my whole life, I'll get something 90% done and then close enough, go on to the next thing, never finish it, right? What I really wanted to do is to get it actually done, not just good enough. All right. So by deciding, okay, let me back up, uh, kind of roll back about a month, go back into episode zero, create the books that that probably could be by itself get them published once they're published now it's out of my hair i can it's done move on right but get them out go through the what i say is 1800 pages or whatever depending on you know one version is 1500 pages because i made the font smaller <laughs> that made it feel less awful i'm like okay that's not the right way to do it but ain't nobody gonna read this little tiny font um but I'm like, all right, so let me back up, do it the right way. One thing that I never really did, consciously at least, the way you're supposed to do a book or a movie or whatever, you know, you, you introduce your characters, you have some problem, you create the solution, and then you have a natural conclusion, right? If it's a sitcom, every sitcom, it seems like it starts off at one point, Something happens, but by the end of the episode, you're right back to where you started so that the next episode can repeat, right? You know, you buy a car, you decide cars aren't for you. By the end of the episode, you get rid of the car. Now you don't have a car again. That's, you know, most episodes that I remember seeing. It's, it's, you get something that happened, you know. By the end of the episode, you're right back to where you started. But if you have sort of a character arc or something, or, you know, there should, there should be something that happens. I'm really trying not to have drama. I don't want more drama, right? You got enough drama in real life. I don't want to create this, you know, it, a lot of shows that I've gotten into on TV when I was watching, you know, like if I was binge watching or something like that, you like the storyline, but then there's always this stupid drama that they had to write in. It's like, well, I don't want that. You know, I don't, you know, I guess you need some conflict for it to be a good story, but do you need to add more conflict just to make it real? You know, we already got that in real life. We don't need, you know, I'm not going to add politics to my book. That kind of thing, right? Space flight is complicated enough as it is. There's going to be something that'll happen. It's in there. Just be ready for it. So I'm not going out of my way to create something that doesn't work. My, my theory on the book was... Wouldn't it be nice if it did work? This is kind of like a fantasy book anyway. It's like, what are the odds that somebody off the street is going to get to go to Mars? Right? So it was more just to be fun. Okay. 
So now that I've taken the step back, I can look at every book and also in within that every chapter will have, you know, like an essay, you know, introduction, two or three building conclusion, and then we go on to the next thing. So in the book and what I'm calling season one is going to have logical steps or systems or something you know the character will create the robot army or the character will create a space station or the character will go off on a mission to rescue something right so that will be a chapter onto itself and the seasons the books because I was writing this originally as a web video series Season one is going to be when we leave from Earth to Mars, do your mission, come back to Earth. That's all one season. Now, within season one is going to be multiple books because it was so long. But I was kind of writing it with that in mind anyway. You know, I, it'll probably be season one will have, I'm going to say six. Six books will cover the first year but they'll be little, okay. And each book will kind of stand alone, but it would make sense if you read all of them. Typical, right? But then we come back, season two will be a completely new mission. Some of the same characters will add in new characters, the spaceship will get an upgrade, more robots, new mission, okay. In my mind, I've already got season three and four and five and six kind of floating around. Sometimes I make notes about them. So we got lots of seasons. All right. Okay. So why do I want this to be done so soon? Right. Well, so soon, 10 years later. When I look at the simple fact of the money that I make from books... versus the money I make on YouTube. And yes, I am making some money every time somebody watches one of these videos, I get a couple pennies here and there. It adds up because of the volume. I make more money off of videos than I do off of books. Because basically nobody's got time to sit and read books anymore. You know, you get home from work, you don't want to sit down and read a book. Books aren't cool anymore. Think about all the bookstores that are now doing something else or just closed up completely, you know. A bookstore becomes a coffee shop that has a few books in the back corner, if it's, a, if it's there at all. You know, there's not very many bookstores anymore. You know, you got Amazon. Uh, and even Amazon, most of what Amazon does isn't books anymore. It's everything else. You can buy a car from Amazon. So... But YouTube, YouTube is still doing pretty good right now. Hard to say what it's going to be in 10 years, but I'm more worried about right now. So what I realized, and my plan was I always wanted to take Mars Clipper and make the videos, make like a web show. All right. There was a year in Austin before I came out here that I got all excited about rewriting this. This was originally a different book and then it became Mars Clipper. I started over completely. And I wrote, probably seven chapters out of 15 when I was still in Austin, but I also stopped a few times. And I went down some funny rabbit holes of creating I was gonna make puppets for stop motion animation. I was gonna do computer animation. I was gonna do um, hand-drawn animation. I had all these ideas. Didn't get any writing done. But the reasoning was, because I had a full-time job, there was no way I had time to put together a crew and actually shoot. I had actually found some people that were interested. I mean, nobody with money, but you know, you can get a few of your friends together and you can shoot something, right? Have a couple cameras and 
shoot some takes and edit it together and put it up on YouTube. Well, with my schedule, because of the hours I was working, there was no way I could find anybody to work around my schedule. And so I started looking at doing all, what could I do by myself? And that's kind of how I was looking at it, is I could do a comic book series or a YouTube series based on computer animation, that kind of thing. So part of why this takes so long, right, is I kind of like, well, okay, it didn't make sense to start doing animation until I had the story finished. So where I'm at now, story is finished. It's so big it doesn't fit on the screen anymore. But now I've got a script, and then I can take that script, and like I can just take a section of it and make a video. And then I'll go forward a little bit, find another section, you know, just work on the fun parts. Maybe there are... A lot of it may not end up on the videos. Although, there are pages that I've read where I'm spending a lot of time describing something that if I just did a video about it, it could be simple. You know, I, I, I don't like, I'm describing as, you know, my spaceship is the size of the school bus. Well, everybody knows how big a school bus is, right? So if you can just show something, it's like spaceship equals school bus. Now you know how big it is, right? Um, describing how things work is really slow, but if you can just flash up a picture, it's really fast. So once I had that figured out, I'm like, all right, now I've got the, the book finished. I'll, you know, I've got the script. I can put that up as a book, but I can also pick parts out of it and then create the videos. And when I, when I started looking in, I can look in Amazon and I can see how much money the books are making. It shows me every time somebody clicked on buy, you know, all the way back from Desert Storm Diaries was published in 2009. So I've got 11 years of historical data on people buying it. I have made more in four or five months, the last four or five months on, on YouTube is more than all of the books I've sold since 2009. Okay. So yes, there's a book. Now there's always the chance that somebody's going to see that and get excited and go buy a thousand copies. I'm not really holding my breath, but I kind of look at the book as, well, it's out there, okay? And I can say it's based on, you know, now I can say the videos are based on a book kind of thing. So, so that's kind of the plan, I guess. The... The book will get published in smaller pieces. The videos will start coming out. I'm looking to start releasing the videos in January 2021. Might slide a little bit, but what I'm trying to do is get into a workflow now where I can kick out a book, do some videos, kick out another book, do some videos, and some of this, there's a web comic that I read once in a while when I remember. Free Fall, um, just kind of fun. Space theme kind of thing. I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, so he's publishing a web comic, I think three times a week, pretty consistently. And it's funny because in in some elements, he'll jump ahead like a month in one comic. And then others, you'll have probably four weeks of comics that are about three days of action, right? It doesn't have to track, you know, it's just whatever, right? So when I was looking at it, I'm like, all right, in the book, I've got about 75 days of action written in, you know, in that. 
but it takes 200 days to get to Mars. And then you're sitting at Mars for about three months, roughly, waiting for Earth to get in the right position. So when you leave Mars, Earth is where you want it to be. Okay. So I'm skipping days anyway. All right. So I guess what I was thinking, though, is I could do, con I could do the videos once a week for years to cover that first year, basically. So we got, I don't know, hopefully somebody likes it. There's, there's plenty to keep me amused for a long time. But I think the workflow though, when I, when I first planned on moving out here, this was kind of my goal. You know, I wanted to have a little shop that I could build stuff, you know, build a little model airplane or build a robot or just kind of tinker is what I call it. So I got that. I got the welder and the grinder. So if I want to make something, I can. So I made the little bicycle project, Turtle, which is going to get finished. It's, it was, it's still a priority, but it's, it was taken away from Mars Clipper and I needed to finish Mars Clipper. So I could only do one thing at a time. Okay. But I'm kind of where I want to be right now. I mean, obviously when the money catches up, that'll be better, but it's getting close. It honestly is. It's, and I've said that before, but it's, I almost don't want to take credit for it, but I mean, getting the house built, paying off the land, selling the other half of the land that I didn't need kind of thing. That made everything a whole lot simpler. So now I don't need a thousand dollars a month anymore. You know, I can, I can live pretty skinny. So now I can put the time into doing what I need to do. And this year, really, I mean, it's been a weird year for everybody, but this year, now I've got my setup to where I want it. I've got, you know, between, you know, the panels that I had and then the, the other panels that were donated, I've got solar so that most days I've got more power than I need. We had that storm come through, so I had a couple of days with not too much sun. Okay, then I ran out of power into the evening. All right. Could have started the generator, but I'm like, well, I'll just take a break, you know. I'm not on a, a deadline that, you know, if I don't produce today, somebody's going to be mad. So it makes it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, it's like I've got the systems in place now. A lot of the writing in the last month I've been doing in the bus again, I went back and figured out where the mice were getting in. I think I've eliminated that problem. So in the, uh, in the house and in the bus now, I'm, I think I'm mouse free again. Um, I had a computer set up over there and I, I'd come back in the morning and the wires were all chewed up and everything. There's a whole pile of little plastic shavings where the mouse was, <laughs> the mouse was trying to eat the mouse cable. Yeah, go figure, right? And he's just chewing away on that thing. I'm like, dude, seriously, go just die, you know? So I think we got that solved. Now I can just kind of just sit there and crank it out. So what I'm, my goal is you know, between, you know, hours a day or days a week, I'll do some writing, get the books finished, start doing the videos again. So that's kind of the goal. So anyway, this will probably be the last video for 2020. Uh, I just really wanted to say thanks to everybody that's followed along. Um, this was the first full year, I guess, of, um, of making money on YouTube. Now I'm not, you know, all rich and famous or anything, but it was 2019 when I went over a thousand subscribers. And so now I'm eligible to make money. So, you know, thanks to everybody that clicked on subscribe, that really did make a difference. That gave me the option to do what I'm doing now. Thanks to everybody on Patreon and other supporters who, you know, Anything from sending me a dollar once a month on Patreon to, you know, I had Houston Firefox donate me you know, a pretty good pile of solar panels that he wasn't using. So now I've got enough power to do what I'm doing. That really makes a difference. I've had people send me care packages. Uh, I'll get to the post office and here's, uh, you know, another case of cliff bars, you know. 
that's the that's the fuel that I need to get through here. I need solar power and I need cliff bars, you know. Um the last month where I didn't have enough to cover the phone bill, so a few people chipped in, had a little bit of extra money, so then I went out and I bought extra groceries and wasn't keeping track of that. That was pretty funny. Um And then I, I skipped a week. I didn't go in, for, and I forgot there was a package there from the week before, so I go in. I had literally about 50 or 60 pounds of canned food that I had ordered with some of the extra money. So now I'm stocked up on that again. But I had one box that was on the box, actual weight, 20, 28 pounds, I think. It was all canned food. Another, another box was 18 pounds, I think. And then there was two boxes. I threw them away, uh, emptied the boxes into something else. you know, for the ride home. So I'm sitting there dragging over 50 pounds of canned food across the desert on the bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize how heavy it was. I got it on the bike, on the trailer, and I'm like, okay, it's a, kind of a solid load. You know, you could feel it, but it's mostly downhill coming home, so I wasn't too worried. You know, I hit, I made my trail here, right? So I didn't have to go all the way around, so I, I got a little shortcut. And I get into the softer sand. The road was going okay, but I get into the softer sand and the trailer just, no, I'm not going across the sand with all that, all that weight. So once I got onto my property, I made a little pile, brought half of it up and then took the wheelbarrow back and got the rest. And it was when I started picking up the rest, I looked at the label and I'm like, oh, that's why it doesn't work. <laughs> Too much of a good thing. Yeah, unfortunately, canned food is, is the heaviest, but that's what I need out here because it lasts longer. So go figure. But anyway, yeah, it's it's been an interesting year. I just really wanted to say thanks to everybody that's helped out, that's been along for the ride. You know, even just, you know, not everybody can, you know, send me money. And, and you know, it's like I didn't come out here just so people could send me money. You know, it's, I didn't quit my job thinking that was going to happen. Um, part of me feels bad as, you know, I was trying to explain to my mom, I was like, you know, you don't, you don't go ask your neighbors to haul water for you because you quit your job and sold your truck. That's kind of rude. You know, you don't come out here without being able to take care of yourself. Right. The issue I think, or, you know, the difference is it's close. It's trending upward. Um, And when the rain comes, then we'll be set. And it'll come. It's just a matter of when. But old guy I used to know, the cowboy way or the cowboy code or, you know, whatever. You, you don't sit there and expect people to help you. You know, if you help each other out, that's fine. But you don't, you don't bug all your friends. Hey, give me 20 bucks or loan me a smoke or buy me a beer. It's like, no, get go go. do your own you know so so when it does happen I do appreciate it thank you and uh it'll be an interesting you know 2021 everybody's like "Ooh, it's going to be a new year it's like yeah things are changing some things are the same maybe we'll get a little bit smarter do things a little bit better yeah Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to get this video chopped up into littler pieces because, again, it's too big. <laughs> Must stop talking. Alrighty. Thanks for following along and uh, stay tuned. 2021 is coming up. Um, check out the free book preview on marshclipper.com. Look for episode zero. Uh, If you're interested in that and you'd like to follow along, do subscribe. There's a Mars Clipper channel. Links will be down in the description, also on that website. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now. I've been having just a blast the last month or two, getting into the book again. Um, I, I, I just hope that somebody likes it as much as I, as I enjoyed writing it. You know, I, I look at it, I'm like, okay, this is definitely not going to be for everybody. But I'm just sitting here giggling sometimes when I'm, when I'm reading it.